Welcome to the Accelerate Church weekly broadcast. We are so glad you tuned in and we believe you'll be strengthened and encouraged as Pastor Jeremy File continues his sermon series on the basis of the word. Get a notebook, get a pen, get your Bible and be ready to receive right now as we tune in to this service already in progress. David is called a man after God's own heart in Psalms 89 and Acts 13. And notice a man after God's own heart is a man, and if you're a woman, you could say a woman, that will do all of his will. Well, God's word is his will. So I'm going to say it that way. A man, a woman after God's own heart is a person that will follow him with everything they are. They will say, I'm following your word. I'm following your word. How many in here are following his word? Praise the Lord. A man after God's own heart will actually be consumed with the Word of God. So if you're not really consumed with the Word of God, that kind of just locates where you are, and it's not for you to testify here this morning that you've been a rebel, etc. But what you have to do and what I have to do is remove all the choke points when it comes to the Word. That's what David did. He got into sin. Everybody knows about it. Aren't you glad it was his life written about and not the details of your sin? You know, so everyone knows, everyone knows, well, David's sin because it's recorded. Committed adultery as if four wives weren't enough, which, by the way, he didn't follow God's law on that. And by the way, that's one reason he had such war all of his life, because his lawlessness led to lawlessness in those that followed him. Your lawlessness does the same thing. That's why you got to make sure your life's on the basis of the word. So I'm going to do something today that I've never done before. I'm going to preach Psalms 119. Why? Because this is the psalm called the psalm of the word i think this is interesting it's the longest chapter in the bible no we're not going to read all 176 verses but hey notate this in psalms 119 there are 198 references to the word of god in this one psalm i want you to catch this david we all know you raised your hand you've heard he's a man after god's own heart Why is he a man after God's own heart? Because he loved the word. He was completely consumed. And the only way for you to really get that is for me to go off like a machine gun in a minute and show you all of these. I hope you have your pens ready. There's probably no way you're going to be able to keep up if you have your actual Bible here. I'm pro, real Bible, you holding your Bible. But I've got to move today and I've got to show you how consumed he is with the word of God. Just in one of his psalms. In this one psalm, the word of God is called... The way, 13 times. The Word of God shows up with different terms. It's called the way, 13 times. It's called the law, 25 times. It's called testimonies, 23 times. I don't expect you to keep up with all these. I'm just showing you this. It's called precepts, 21 times. Now, why am I showing you all this? Because I know some people, you're like, oh, no, this is like math class. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not asking you to count and keep up with all this. Here's what I'm showing you. He is consumed completely with the Word of God. The Word of God is called commandments, excuse me, statutes, 22 times. Commandments, 22 times. Isn't that interesting? Judgments, 18 times. If you're against judgment, you're against the Word. Okay, truth four times, and righteousness six times, either righteousness or the word right. So the rest of today, we're going to spend our time, and you can look if you want to Psalms 119, because if you go ahead and flip over there, you might be able to skip from verse to verse with me. Psalms 119, I'm going to spend the rest of the time showing you how much he talked about the word of God. I showed you the terms he used, but look at this in Psalms 119, verse 9. Say it boldly. Thank God for the word. word. How can a young man cleanse his way? Psalms 119, 9 says, by taking heed according to your word. Now remember this. Always remember this. According to is the set standard. So this tells us something very valuable in life. The clean life is the life that sets the word as the standard. To define a clean life any other way is polluted, actually. 
It's distorted. It's deceptive to say, well, they're living a clean life, but you don't even think about the Word of God. Because, listen, the only way a young man can cleanse his way is by saying, you know what? My standard is the Word. Everybody say the Word. The word. Psalm 119, 11. Your Word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Oh, I love this. The Word keeps you from sin, and sin keeps you from the Word. Psalm 119, verse 16 says, I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your Word. Notice this. I will is mentioned twice in here. You are in control of your will. You have to sometimes will yourself to delight in the statutes of the Lord. If you've been in Christianity longer than 10 days, you know what I'm saying is true. You do. But I'll tell you, the word's addictive. You get into it, it, it makes you want to get into it more and more. You stay away from it, and you want to stay away from it more and more. By the way, when you don't delight, you end up forgetting. So delight is a key to you living a life on the basis of the Word of God. you got to delight in the Word. When you delight in the Word, you won't forget it. Because you delight. That would be like me just forgetting my wife. I delight in the wife of my youth. 21 years in, I still delight in her. Amen. That don't get you excited, but it sure enough gets me excited. <laughs> well, I ain't going to forget about her. I had to learn as a man, because sometimes, men, we do that. We just totally forget. But once you've been married a few days, you realize real quick, I can't forget about her. And the way I, I make sure I don't forget is I delight myself in her. Notice, I will. Everybody say, I will. I will. Sometimes you just have to say, I will. I will delight myself. Somebody have to do that about this sermon right now. You know, it looks like I don't like this at all. I wanted something encouraging, positive. This is pretty positive. I'll just say this. One reason people forget the word so easily is because they don't delight in it. Psalm 119, verse 17, deal bountifully with your servant. How many of you would like the Lord to deal bountifully with you? Raise your hand. Would you like that? Some of you don't care. Well, uh, how many would like that? Let me honestly see your hand. Yeah. You want the Lord to deal bountifully? Well, you got to want it, first off. Here's how, and here's why he's going to do this, that you may live and keep his word. Did you know the prosperity that God gives you is so that you will live and keep his word? He doesn't prosper you so you can go do your own thing. He's going to prosper you to keep his word. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so. Me and the kids continue to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was a single mom because my husband wasn't there, but I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church. See you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him. And it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's going to fill this seat. <laughs> uh. So that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep and he was up putting on a button up shirt and I remember him just, oh, sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me, um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church, and I said, well, what caused you to come, like, with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you, and I wanted what you have. 
I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up and my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say like my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home. But one thing I would not do, Um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is gonna affect more than just you. The point of a bountiful life is so you can keep the Word of God. Psalm 119.25, my soul clings to the dust. Wow. Revive me according to your Word. I already told you that's the set standard. I'm not going to keep repeating that because you're going to see it a lot today. According to is the set standard. So here we go. You are made alive. You are revived when you make the Word your standard. Remember, this is David, a man after God's own heart. We all kind of want to be like that. Wouldn't it be awesome for God to say that? Kenny's a man after God's own heart. Andy's a man after God's own heart. I would like him to say Jeremy is a man after God's own heart. Well, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm made alive by the standard of the Word. See, don't make me come alive just because I can do a cannonball into a swimming pool. I don't come alive just because I go lay on the beach, though. I like to lay on the beach, though. I like to do a cannonball into a swimming pool. You know what makes me alive? The Word. Somebody say the Word. It'll revive you. It'll quicken you. It'll make you alive. Verse 28, Psalm 119. My soul melts from heaviness. You ever dealt with heaviness? Some of you apparently are today. Heaviness? Heaviness? Anyone? Any takers? No, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. How many have ever dealt with it? Just be honest. I know I've dealt with it. Heaviness tries to get on you. You know what you do when that heaviness tries to get on you? you got to put on a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. you got to lift up your voice to God. It's more than a song. You're going to have to do it. I don't want to. Well, keep your heaviness then. See how that works out for you. Because what is that heaviness meant to do? Heaviness is meant to break down your strength. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Woo! Your strength to make it through all the heavy things of life is found in living according to the Word of God. Verse 38, establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. I like that. Establish your word. Make it my firm foundation, fixed a part of me. My right hand is fixed everywhere I go. I want the word to go everywhere I go. Somebody say amen. Verse 41, let your mercies come also to me, O Lord. Your salvation according to your word. Oh, listen to this. Salvation from whatever you face, it, it comes only when the word of God is your set standard. Did you catch that? Salvation comes only when the word of God is your set standard. Verse 42, Psalm 119. Y'all enjoying this? Could do every single verse, but we'd be here a while. Some of you are like, we're going to be here a while anyway. Well, I'm a lot closer to being done than you realize. I like this, Psalm 119, 42. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in the economy. See, you don't even have a verse for that. People are consumed with that. And I understand you have investments. You want to see what the NASDAQ's doing. 
But no matter what the NASDAQ is doing, you got to get your trust in the Word. Everybody say the Word. word. Notice this. Your answer is always found when you trust in the Word. It's amazing. Till you transfer your trust into the Word, you won't have an answer for a lot of people. But when people reproach you, you know what you do? Get your trust solidly on the Word. The answer for all of life's toughest questions are in the Word. Verse 43, take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. How many of y'all understand the devil knows Scripture? So what's he going to do? Try to get the word out of your mouth. His whole plan is dependent on him getting his thoughts in your mind and you speaking them. Oh, what's that pain? Oh, no, I hope that don't kill me. Oh, no. I could give you all kinds of examples. The enemy's counting on you taking that and putting that in your mouth. But when you take the word, oh, he hates it because the word's like a two-edged sword. You get that coming out of your mouth, and he's trying to get something else in your mouth. He gets his hand up there and slice and dice, baby. The devil ends up leaving people alone that keep the word in their mouth. He gets tired of messing with them. He thinks so that you are going to be like so many other people that go by what you see out here, go by the circumstance, go by your hurt feelings and everything else, and drop the word. Don't drop the word. Keep the word in your mouth. Look at this. For I have hoped in your ordinances. I want you to take note of this. Speaking the word produces hope. So if you're in a hopeless situation, you need to speak the word. Speak the word. What happens? It produces hope. Even when there's no hope. Think of the scripture about Abraham. In hope, he believed against all hope. <laughs> what if you're in a hopeless situation? Speak the word of God. It's going to produce hope. Verse 49 says, remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. There it is again. The word produces hope. Verse 50, this is my comfort in my affliction. For your word has given me life. There it is again. You may be afflicted, but that's no reason to be start talking death. See, God doesn't even want you to die sick. If you don't make it to the rapture, let's say for whatever reason, Jesus prolongs his coming. I don't see that happening, but if he did, all of us in here are going to die if 100 years goes by. Nobody. I mean, maybe 120, I'll say, because there may be somebody that lives a super long life in here. But... All of us are going to face this, right? And it's the Word. It's the Word that we go by. Here's my point. You don't have to die sick. You can just decide to lay it down. Well, lay it down. Why do you have to be sick? Who told you you had to be sick to die? See how that comes in? The enemy comes. You got to be sick. No, listen. Now, there's a lot of sick people that have died. But you don't have to be sick to die. You just lay down your life by faith. Go on to heaven. I prayed for people to do that. They're ready to go. I prayed for them just to go on by faith. Huh. Many are the afflictions. Here's another scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I've been delivered. How do I know that? The word. On the basis of the word. Yeah, well, who do you think you are? I'm just a believer of the word. Just catch this. Verse 50. This is my comfort. We read over it kind of quick, but I want you to know this. Comfort in affliction is found in the Word. So when you're in a battle, you need to know this. It's not the time to stay away from the Word. It's the time to get into the Word like never before. Those times in your life when feelings are screaming at you to stay away, don't do it then. Press in like never before. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Word is life to those that find it. Praise God. Verse 58, got to keep moving. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. 
There's a lot of people that have presumed upon the mercy of God. Is he merciful? Yes, he is. Are his mercies new every day? Yes, they are. But to live a presumptuous lifestyle is to live a dangerous lifestyle. If you want to find mercy according to the word, here's what you stumble across. A scripture such as Proverbs 28 that says, He will have mercy upon who, on those who confess and forsake their sin. <laughs> but see, it doesn't say anything about merciful to those that just live and don't forsake their sin or confess it. Don't acknowledge They just live. Well, he's merciful. He's going to be merciful to me. You're presuming upon this, and that's a very dangerous way to live. Be merciful to me according to the word. That's the standard. Yeah. Verse 65. You've dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Just, just notate this. God only deals with people on the basis of his word. That's why we have to take the series like this serious. Say, so you know what? I'm not going to live any other way but on the basis of the word. This is the only way God is dealing with his people. Verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. Boy, David was being honest right here. When you live outside the parameters of the word of God, that's called going astray. Don't define it any other way. You're going astray, brother, sister, when you're not going according to the word of God. Are you starting to catch the drift here of maybe why God was like, that David is something special. For him to just go on and on and on about the word like this. Wow. What's his deal anyway? Oh, he's a man after God's own heart. <laughs> Verse 74. Those who fear you, Lord, will be glad when they see me. What? Why? Because I've hoped in your word. When you hope in the word, it causes those that fear God to be glad when they see you. Hey, don't worry if rebels aren't happy to see you. <laughs> see, everybody's worried about that. Well, what's the world going to think about that? They already think you're a nutcase. You're in church. Don't you understand that? You're a nutcase. <laughs> According to the world, not the word. The standard of the world is sleep in. There's a lot better things to do than go to church. Especially a church like this where the preacher is going to preach to you and make you feel bad. Why? Because I show you in which way your life is wrong. Not so you're condemned, but so you change. Before you take your last breath. You've got to make the word your standard. Hopefully today, this is exposing to you with the life of someone who set the word as their standard and maybe exposing the life that you've had if you haven't had that as your standard. I like this. When you hope in the word, it causes those that fear God to be glad when they see you. So see, instead of worrying about, oh, they didn't like it when they saw me. Well, consider the source. Are they God-fearing? You see, if I saw my pastor and he's like, goes over here, I'm like, oh no, pastor's running away from me. Why is he not excited to see me? Or if I see him, that's not really his style to walk away, by the way. If I see him and he seems disgruntled or sad or brokenhearted, that would make me wonder what's going on. But if a rebel does that, I don't worry about that. Uh, they didn't like seeing you. Didn't. Well, I can't help that. I've already made up my mind, guys. No matter who it separates me from, who it puts me with, I'm following the Word of God for the rest of my days. And as for me and my house, we're going to follow that. You're in my house, so you're going to follow the Word. Period. <laughs> you ought to be concerned if it's godly people that fear God. And they're not happy to see you. But I just got to tell you this. When you set the word of God as your standard, those that are following God's word are going to be happy to see you every time. Every time. All right, verse 76. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort. According to your word to your servant. See, I love this. The reason he's a man after God's own heart is because he continues to go back. My standard is the word. My standard is the word. My standard is the word. I know that's how your merciful kindness is to me. It's according to the word. But see, if you don't know what the word says, then you don't really know. Verse 81 and verse 82. I'm going to hit this and we've got to move. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. Even if you feel like fainting, even if you feel worn down, 
You can hope in the word. Verse 82, my eyes fell from searching your word, saying, when will it comfort me? Let me ask you a question. Have you studied the word until your eyes were weary? There are people in this room that have. I know that. You know, I, I remember this about Dake, who has the Dake study Bible. And, of course, we have God's plan for man on the first and third Sunday nights here. And, and Pastor Ricky's been doing that for 18 years, teaching from his God's plan for man. And he's such a detailed guy. And, in fact, he's where I got how many times David used the different names for the word earlier when I had that on the screen. Because he would make lists like that and show things like this. And here's what I heard, that he would stay up sometimes 48 and 72 hours studying the word of God. Some people would come see him and his eyes would be bloodshot. Not because he's been drinking, but because he's been in that word studying day and night, day and night, day and night. When's the last time your eyes got weary from studying the word? See, think about it. Not, not so you feel bad, but just think about it. That's what the psalmist says. My eyes fell from searching your word. Wow. Many people look at their devices more than the word. So, you know, you can relate to that. Your eyes get heavy. You, you get tired. You finally say, oh, i got to turn that off. <laughs> or if you're like me the other night, I was trying to watch a basketball game. I fell asleep with the game on. My wife said, wake up. Turn that thing off. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who cares about the score? I'm going to sleep. Got to go to sleep. Got to turn it off. My eyes got weary watching my device. Wow. Has that ever happened to you? Don't sit here and lie. Verse 89, Psalm 119. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. See, I don't even remember who was playing the other night. That shows you how quickly a game passes. My eyes got weary from watching that, and that's, that's come and gone. But forever. Everybody say forever. forever. Your word is settled. Huh. Verse 101, Psalm 119. I've restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. Again, let me repeat what I said. The word will cause you to restrain your feet from evil. Evil will cause you to restrain yourself from the word. What we've got to do is develop a taste for the word of God instead of the world. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in with us to today's broadcast on the imminent return of Jesus. While that does conclude today's message, that does not conclude this message in its entirety. And if you would like to hear more, head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find the rest of this series as well as other series preached by Pastor Jeremy. Or if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you're not in the area, we would still love to hear from you. You can write us at info at accelerate.church.cc. We would love to hear from you, pray with you, encourage you. You can even give us a call right here at 806 418 8913. We can't wait to hear from you and see you on the next television broadcast.